Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. Today I'd like to show you how to paint a front view cityscape. I did this painting originally on location in Madrid from a cafe. There were a lot of things to choose from to paint, but I chose to paint these buildings um, with a straight on perspective, which is the easiest uh, type of building perspective to do. And it worked out really nicely because of the color of the buildings. There was the yellow building in the front or in the in the center and the red one to the left and the sort of ochre colored or beige building on the right. And so it just made for a really nice composition of colors and made the painting strong just based on that. The only real perspective in this painting is the street below and you can see the construction lines that I've drawn that radiate out from the two um, archway doors at the bottom. But everything else is just straight and flat. There is some perspective, I guess, in the shadows that are cast from the balconies, but all of the buildings are straight. And when you're pressed for time and you're painting cityscapes, you really want to simplify as much as possible you want to take opportunities to make some things abstract and a little bit mysterious. And then it's also a really handy tool to just do a straight, a straight front view perspective of the buildings. And um, it's just the, the easiest approach and one that you can do very quickly. What really attracted me to this scene was the light and shadow. The shadows cast from the balconies were so pretty. The other thing that I really liked in the scene was one balcony which had some red begonia or geranium flowers and so I decided to add those flowers to the next balcony as well. So I embellished a, <laughs> embellished a little bit. I'm starting out by blocking in the main colors of the buildings. So for the top uh, yellowish building, I used a combination of cadmium lemon and azo yellow deep, which made a nice medium cadmium lemon, or excuse me, a nice medium cadmium yellow. <laughs> and then for the building underneath um, that part, the, the part that surrounds the two arch doors, I used a combination of yellow ochre and azo yellow deep. For the building on the right that's beige, I used yellow ochre and a lot of water. I also used yellow ochre for the small brick details just to the left of the yellow building and to the right of where I'm adding this red. This red is a salmon color that I mixed with cadmium red and a little bit of azo yellow deep. I simplified quite a few things in this composition. There were um, some awnings and umbrellas that intersected the buildings. I eliminated those. Um, I, I looked for interesting shapes. So I really liked the little blue street sign with the white arrow in it. The one street lamp, that was sort of um, something that I saw quite a bit of in Madrid. So I wanted to include that. I liked the combination of circles, squares, and rectangles in this flat composition. I'm using Burnt Sienna by itself to paint this small section on the right. I probably sound like a broken record, but I had taken my small watercolor block and this tiny tin with me and one travel brush, a pencil and an ink pen and an eraser and a small water cup. And it was so easy to take with me. I had it in a small tote bag and um, it just allowed me to be spontaneous and paint wherever I could find a place to sit in the shade and something that I wanted to paint. I didn't have to unpack a lot of things. It was easy to just pop the tin out, put it on the table. Nobody at the restaurant ever minded that I was painting on their table or painting, <laughs> painting my painting using their table. And um, anyway, it's just so easy and fun and uh, easy to take anywhere. And once you get used to using these small sets and taking them with you, you'll find yourself painting things you never thought you'd paint before. And 
you don't make plans necessarily to go and paint a specific place, but it allows you to just have the freedom to be very spontaneous and take your paints out wherever you are and um, just start sketching and painting. So when you're painting pavement, as I'm doing right now, it's a really good idea to not make it gray. Pavement is usually gray and it's usually ugly and um, it's an opportunity as an artist for you to make it more beautiful. So what I usually like to do is do a gradation of color. So you can see that on the left side, I started with a reddish pink color and it's lighter than the red on the building. So when a color is on a horizontal surface, it's usually a lighter value than the same color on a vertical surface. So I wanted to make a reddish color on the left and then a warm tone in the foreground because warm colors come forward and that adds to the feeling of depth. And then as the colors got closer, as the cement got closer to the building, I made it a bluish violet. And this will tie in nicely with the blue uh, that lines the two arch doorways and also complement the warm yellow on that section of the, the building. So I try to think these things through and make each section of my painting interesting. So cement could be the most boring part of the painting, um, maybe something you'd even think of eliminating. But instead of eliminating it, if you think of it as something that you can play with um, and make it interesting and do a triad of different colors or whatever it is that you want to do, then it becomes something worth including in your painting. So I'm just using my imagination now and a few random colors to create interest in the interior of these little arch doorways. If you go back to the reference photo, you'll see all kinds of signs and a lot of details that I could have included if this were a bigger painting and if I had more time. Even though I didn't include that many details, I think there's enough going on here that it makes it a really nice, pretty painting to look at. It's an inviting scene. The sunny yellow building and the light and shadow really says Madrid in the summer. So I was very pleased with how it came out. For the shutters, they were all green shutters, but the light was so strong on them that where they were uh, lit with the sun, they, they barely had any color at all. Just a hint of yellow and just a hint of green. So I painted in the green color only where there was shade on the windows, or excuse me, on the, the shutters. I used a mixture of ultramarine blue and hooker's green to make the color for the shady part of those green shutters. Notice how I'm not making my lines too perfect. I'm trying to paint fast and really imitate what I did um, when I was on location. My brush lines are sort of similar to my ink lines in that they're very loose and I always try to make uh, the vertical lines vertical and pretty straight up and down even if they wiggle and wobble a little bit. The horizontal lines I play with a little bit more. I'm painting the begonias now using cadmium red by itself. Not too much water, I wanted it to be a really nice bright red. I'm going to use hooker's green for the leaves and I've added a little bit of azo yellow deep and yellow ochre to that green to make it a more natural looking green than the green in the shutters. Now I'm using a mixture of burnt sienna and quinacridone purple bluish to make the color for the shutters, the shutters on the yellow building. I'm not using burnt sienna by itself because it would be too red and would tie in too closely with the red on the building on the left side. And I also didn't want it to be too, too warm because the building is yellow. So adding a little bit of quinacridone purple bluish um, really toned it down to um, a nice I wouldn't call it a gray brown, but definitely a toned down brown and a prettier brown. 
Now I'm going to start adding some of the darker details and I'm going to be using a combination of quinacridone purple bluish plus ultramarine blue plus burnt sienna in different um, percentages. So some of the time I'll have the dark be more violet and have more of the quinacridone purple bluish in it and at other times it'll be warmer with more burnt sienna and sometimes it'll be cooler with ultramarine blue. When you're going to put darks in your cityscape it's a really good idea to have the darks be colorful and be in harmony with the other colors in the painting. So it's also a good idea to have thick lines and thin lines um, for your details. You don't want all of your lines to be the same width. So to do that, I use my pointed brush, my round brush, and sometimes I push a little bit harder when I'm making a line and that makes the line thicker. And at other times I have a much lighter touch, which makes the line thinner. For these construction lines, you can see that this violet color is a little more blue and it's a little darker and you see how I'm making thicker lines along the bottom of the building but the lines coming forward are some thin and some thick. I don't want these lines to be too even. I'd like everything to be a little bit um, wonky and a little bit uneven because that's what makes a painting special. That's what makes it different from a photograph and that's a way that you can add rhythm and some line design to your cityscape. The last thing you want is a cityscape that's too perfect. Um, and one of the ways too that you can avoid making your cityscape too perfect is to try to push yourself to paint a little bit faster. When you paint faster, you end up painting more intuitively because you're pushing yourself and you're not allowing yourself to be thinking too much about what you're doing you're just sort of going for it, if that makes sense. And when you paint more spontaneously, um, you'll have more imperfections in your work, but you'll also have some really interesting areas um, where you might surprise yourself and um, do some things with your painting that you didn't anticipate being able to do. The other thing that happens when you paint spontaneously is your paintings usually tend to be fresher looking. Um, your lines are cleaner because you're not second guessing yourself so much. When you think too much about what you're painting, you can end up second guessing a lot. You can end up putting colors down and then taking them off and repainting areas. And before you know it, your painting looks overworked. And um, when you paint spontaneously, even if you um, make mistakes, they usually uh, still have a fresher look. I hope this all makes sense to you. So now I'm adding more dark details and I'm starting to paint the balcony railings. So I'm using more ultramarine and quinacridone purple bluish to make this dark and less of the burnt sienna. For the shutters I'm just making a few little details showing the indentations in the shutters and for the railings, you can see I'm painting them pretty fast, just making a straight line, a horizontal line um, for the top of the railing, and in some cases, one underneath of it, and then lots of little straight lines for the railings. So not too intricately painted, but definitely when you look at the painting, you can see that it's a little balcony and it's ironwork railings, and that's enough. So now I'm adding some more details. I'm adding the blue for that little sign with the arrow. I included that little blue sign because the blue color tied in with the blue that's around the archway. So sometimes I choose what I'm going to include and what I'm going to eliminate based on what it will tie into in other parts of the painting. And I definitely am an artist that looks for color, even if it's a street sign. So. Um, now I'm mixing up a cool violet for the top of the reddish building. I've mixed this with ultramarine blue, quinacridone purple bluish, and just the tiniest hint of yellow ochre. Now I'm painting um, some dark areas at the bottom of the building. It's a good idea in cityscapes 
to add some darks to the bottom of buildings. It just makes them look a little more solid. I'm also starting to add the shadows, the cast shadows from the railings. So my railings are quite dark, made with a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and quinacridone, purple bluish, and not very much water. Just enough water so that I can get nice fresh looking lines um, that don't leave little white dots on the paper. But I want my shadow to be a nice dark cast shadow but not as dark as the railings. So I'm using ultramarine blue and yellow ochre and also a little bit of cadmium red. I want the color of the shadows to be transparent and I also want them to be a little bit different on each section of the buildings. So I want them to be a warmer cast shadow color on the yellow, on the yellow building and on the beige building to be a little bluer. So I've been able to use this number six brush for the entire painting. For a seven inch by 10 inch painting, you can use a number six brush very easily to do the whole thing. If the painting was nine inches by 12 inches, a number eight would probably be a better choice if you only were going to use one brush. When I travel, I usually take my whole set, which includes a two, a four, a six, and an eight. But if I'm only gonna take one brush with me, and a small block like this or my sketchbook, then I usually just choose the number six. So I'm making sure that my shadows are transparent and I'm working rather quickly, making some vertical lines on the left side of each one of the windows and just filling in a nice shape underneath the window. It's amazing what adding shadows can do to architecture. It just makes everything just sort of light up So I want my building to be weighted at the bottom. I mentioned having some darks at the base of the building, but also the lower part of the building um, underneath the balconies and above the, the ground. I want this to be an overall uh, darker value. So I added some cast shadows. I'm using um, quinacridone purple bluish and a little bit of burnt sienna and also a little bit of green in between the two blue arch doors. I just felt like it needed a little green in there and I, I saw a hint of that on the building and it just gave me the idea that a little bit of green thrown in there would be interesting as well. I put some more blue um, on the burnt sienna or on the part of the building that has burnt sienna just to add a little dark to it and I'm making the, the bottom part of the red building an even darker red at the bottom. So just helps give the building weight and having it be darker at the bottom makes the top part look even sunnier and brighter. I find nowadays that I really look for having a lot of contrast in my paintings. I really like some bright lights and light colors like the yellow on the building and in contrast um, also some very dark darks. Staying away from mid-tones more these days. I felt like the pavement in the foreground needed a little more color um, underneath the blue, the blue archway and so I added a little extra splash of blue. So now the painting is mostly finished and I'm going to add a few more finishing touches. When I'm in the finishing stages of a painting, and it's a painting that's a lot about light and shadow, I tend to look for heat and cool towards the end and I tend to want to push um, push the warmth a little bit so I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre and some azo yellow deep here and there where I want to just add a little bit of extra sunshine I guess that's the right word I want to push the warmth push the sunshine and um, just give it a little extra glow and then I also want to push my contrast a little more in my darks and maybe add a few extra details I thought my street in the foreground looked a little too unfinished, so I'm adding some, some details. I'm softening the edge of the building where it meets the ground. That will help create depth because edges get softer as they go back in space. And then I added a little bit of burnt sienna towards the front. I'm going to add just a little more 
warm yellow to the building in the center. That should finish up this painting very nicely. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning how to paint a front view cityscape of this beautiful collection of buildings in Madrid.